Welcome back to SoCal Flying Monkey. It's an exciting time to be in general aviation because the FAA is easing up restrictions, creating an easier path to certification for a lot of avionics. Avionics manufacturers are taking existing products from the experimental world, bringing them into the certified market, and also creating some new really cool products specifically for the certified market. Products like the Garmin G5, Aspen E5, and Dynon HDX system are intended to replace some or all of your analog steam gauges. Replacing the analog instruments with a digital system for me gives uh, the added safety benefit of not having a uh, mechanical vacuum pump and mechanical gyroscopes that eventually will fail. And uh, I also think that the, the more full systems that give you a moving map and traffic and synthetic vision give you a little bit more situational awareness than the old analog steam gauges. Drop a comment in the YouTube comments. Let me know what you think. Do you think that the digital uh, EFIS systems are more reliable and safer than the old analog steam gauges. A couple months ago, I had all my steam gauges in this uh, Piper Cherokee 6 replaced with the Dynon HDX system. Today, I would love to show you all the things that I really like about this HDX system and some of the things that I don't like. I wanna show it to you in action on a flight from Los Angeles to Santa Maria. If along the way you find any of this information useful and like the video, just click like, consider subscribing to the channel. All right, let's go flying. I'm Eric, a private pilot based in Los Angeles. Join me and my family on our aviation adventures throughout Southern California and beyond. All right, first uh, let me show you here what I have actually installed in the airplane in the panel. So here we have uh, the Skyview HDX 10 inch screen. Um, under the certified STC, you have to install it with the D10A, the Dynon D10A as a backup. The D10A and the HDX are independent. They each have their own uh, digital uh, AHARS system and they each have their own battery backup, which is supposed to last for a minimum of 45 minutes. Next to that, I have the JPI EDM 900 engine monitor. The HDX system does have an engine monitoring system, which I think is uh, probably really amazing, but I already had this JPI unit, so I decided to keep it. All the sensors and probes were already installed. Then I've got the Avidyne IFD uh, IFR GPS navigator. Now the Skyview has a separate GPS antenna, has its own flight planning software, but it is not certified for IFR. Uh, as far as the actual GPS goes. So you can use the Skyview HDX system to fly IFR, but if you want to fly IFR by GPS, you need a certified IFR navigator. That's why I have this IFD 540, which I actually had before I got the Dynon installed. Okay, so let's talk about the screen on the Dynon here. The screen is amazing. It's so bright. From their specs, it's a 10.1 inch, 1280 by 800 active matrix, TFT screen. It is super bright. They claim that it's 1350 plus of nits, which is a measurement of screen brightness. Now, just for reference, like an iPad Pro at full brightness claims to have 600 nits. So this screen is really bright. I have no trouble viewing it in daytime. The screen of the uh, HDX 10 inch display here is fully touch screen. And there are also these eight buttons and two knobs on the sides that you can use uh, to, you know, go through the different menus and manipulate the controls. So my plane was previously equipped with ADS-B in with the Skytrax 100 through the IF, uh, Avidyne IFD, but I also had the Dynon ADS-B in system installed because it was just so cheap to have that installed. And it's another independent instance of ADS-B traffic and weather. And having that on the Dynon display is amazing. I'll show you all about that when we're flying. And um, just here above the D10A is the USB port for the Dynon. This is a port that's used with this little USB drive to load uh, charts and nav data. Now, the nav data you can load into the Dynon unit and you could remove the stick, but charts and approach plates are kept on this USB drive. I also have the TrueTrack Vision Autopilot, which is certified for this aircraft. The Dynon has an autopilot that's currently certified for some Cessna models and for some Bonanza models, some Beechcraft Bonanzas, but it is not currently certified for the Piper PA-32. 
I think at some point it probably will be, but I didn't want to wait. So I had the true track put in and I'm super happy with it. And I'll cover that in another video. Clear prop. All right, so you can see the flight instruments here. It's a classic glass um, cockpit style uh, PFD with the tapes, that airspeed tape. We have a, uh, a artificial horizon attitude indicator here with the ladder pitch degrees, five degrees, 10 degrees. We have uh, altitude tape here, vertical speed indicator tape. We have our local barometer setting, outside air temperature. We have the density altitude based on the local barometer setting and the, out, the outside air temperature that's automatically calculated and always displayed for you, which is very useful at, uh, you know, on takeoff. Um, we have an HSI here driven by a magnetometer. You don't have, there's no precession. You don't have to reset your DG every so often. We have ground speed indication and we have an HSI source selection indication over here. So that's the basic flight instruments. One other part of the Dynan HGX system that I did have installed is the, uh, the knob control panel right here, which controls the heading bugs, the barometer setting, and the altitude bug. It's easy for me to rest my hand on my knee here and change the heading or the barometer or the altitude. Right now I'm going to listen to the ATIS here, and I will dial in the barometer setting. Wyman Air Force Information Echo 1950 Zulu, wind 0904, visibility 10, sky clear, temperature 13, dew point minus 14, altimeter 3020, VOR Alpha and RNAV runway 12 approaches in use. Notice primary runway 12 and runway 30, Pappy's out of service. We got the ATIS and we're going to call Whiteman Ground. Whiteman Ground, Cherokee 631 Bravo Whiskey at County Hangars for Delta Taxi with Echo. Number 6 Bravo Whiskey, Whiteman Ground, runway 12, taxi via Alpha. Taxi to one two via Alpha six the three one Bravo Whiskey. Before takeoff, I'm going to use a couple of functions here. The um, HGX system. I'm going to touch the um, airspeed indication indicator here, and that changes this knob to control the bug for the airspeed. I'm going to bug my airspeed here of um, my rotation speed here of 61 knots. So that's bugged. Then I'm going to use my knob panel here, and I'm going to bug my altitude of 3,000 feet, which is the shelf of the Burbank Class Charlie. When I take off from Wyman, I've got to remain under the Class Charlie. So I'm going to put this bug there at 3,000 because the HDX is going to alert me when I'm approaching the altitude within 200 feet audibly in my headset. With the HDX, you can set your um, VX and VY speed so they appear on the, on the airspeed tape. And as we take off, you'll notice that those are marked. So once I take off, I can hit those speeds precisely because they're pre-marked always on the uh, on the airspeed tape. Wyman Tower, Cherokee 631, Bravo Whiskey is holding short at 1, 2, and Alpha for right downwind departure. 3, Bravo Whiskey, right downwind departure, inside the 5, runway 1, 2, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff on 1, 2, right downwind departure, inside the 5, 631, Bravo Whiskey. Power and the instruments are green. There's our rotation speed. And we're going to hit VY right here. Keep coordinating with the ball. And we're going to make our right turn out. So you can see the edge of the Burbank Class Charlie right here. And this blue arc is where I'm going to cross at 3,000 feet based on my current climb rate. So I just want to keep that beyond Burbank Class Charlie. Very nice tower, Cherokee. 631 Bravo Whiskey over the 5118, looking for a westbound transition. 631 Bravo Whiskey, Van Nuys Tower, transition approved, Van Nuys Altimeter 3013, Squawk 0251. 
3013 and 0251, one Bravo Whiskey. 03100 Echo Whiskey, we're in 6 right, clear to land, King Air on the road. Alright, so we got the uh, approval for Van Nuys to transition their airspace. We're climbing up to 3000. You can see the Whiskey blue arc. Below 2500 for the next two miles. Alright, out of below 2500, one Bravo Whiskey. Alright, well, they're restricting me out of below 2500. Okay. So we can bug that. Same altitude. But the, uh, the arc that you saw was super useful for staying out of airspace or knowing where you're going to cross. Contact SoCal 134.2. 134.2, 100 Bravo Bravo Whiskey, I'll see your discretion. Did you want to talk to uh, SoCal? Yeah, my discretion, uh, 1 Bravo Whiskey. Yeah, I'll talk to SoCal. Going to go up to 6,500. SoCal Approach, Cherokee 631, Bravo Whiskey, 3,500, climbing 6,500. You can see the depiction of the terrain here. The Dynon HDX has a really cool moving map feature, and we've got terrain here to our right, which is uh, yellow, which means we're within 100 and 1,000 feet of it. 47021, Bravo Whiskey. So the other presentation in the sky view um, here on the um, attitude indicator is our turn pointer, which shows us the, uh, if we're banked, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, and 45 degrees is the white arrow. Then the standard rate turn indicator are these blue arrows. When we make a turn uh, and we line up this yellow arrow with the blue arrow, it means we're turning at a standard rate. The amount of bank required for a standard rate turn changes based on your speed, and the sky view automatically moves those little blue arrows. So here we are, 5,400. We're climbing to 6,500, and I've got that altitude bugged uh, on the sky view, and I used the knob panel over here to set the bug, and it will alert us with an audible alert when we get within 200 feet. 4774, and then I 4774, I 1 Bravo Whiskey. One Bravo Whiskey, contact 5 East of Fillmore, Burbank Altimeter, 3014. 3014, one Bravo Whiskey. So I'm changing the the altimeter setting with the barrel knob. There it goes from 3013 to 3014. And again, we have our density altitude right here based on the outside air temperature of 47 degrees, where our density altitude is 6,500, but we're actually at 6,100 feet indicated altitude. Departing from a mountain strip, uh, or any kind of field with higher elevation, it's very useful to have the density altitude right there for performance. So I just switched fuel tanks now. The Dynan HDX does have fuel timers that you can set up for time or quantity. If you have the Dynan engine monitor, you can set it up to uh, alert you based on how much fuel you've used through the fuel flow indicator at the fuel flow transducer. Approaching altitude. There, you heard the approaching altitude call out. All right, we're here, um, we're set up. I'm leaned way out in economy because I'm going to take my time today on this flight. And um, you can see here that uh, this, the HDX gives us our true airspeed of uh, here and our ground speed. So we got true airspeed right now of 126, ground speed of uh, 121. Uh, and it gives us the winds here. We have a, a crosswind component of eight knots and uh, the winds are 220 at 10 knots, so it's not too windy right now. Now, my flight plan information is being fed from the IFD 540. The, the Skyview has its own internal flight plan that you can use. If you didn't have an IFR navigator, or a separate external navigator, it's fully functional for VFR. So you could you know, program your flight plan in here, but the Skyview and the IFD 540 are linked via ERIC 429, and it automatically receives the flight plan. I'm going to go into the flight plan page here by touching this button. And uh, right now I'm just direct uh, Santa Maria. But what I can do is um, on the Avidine over here, I'm going to insert, I'm going to go over the um, uh, San Marcos VOR, which is RZS. So I'm going to enter that and I'm going to activate it. Activate RZS. So automatically here, boom, you saw it just updated RZS. Santa Maria right there and the autopilot made the turn because I'm in GPSS mode to fly over to the San Marcos VOR. Now one of the reasons that I did that was I was looking on the map here, the zoom of the map of the sky view 
it has terrain, and it's controlled here with this knob, uh, the right knob twists to control the zoom. So I'm zooming out by turning left, zooming in by turning right. The sky view is so configurable to your own user preferences that you can even configure if the turning to the right zooms out or zooms in. That's just one little example of how detailed you can get in the configuration and your user preferences of the sky view. I'll get more into that a little bit later on, but that's just one example. Now, zooming out here, we could see all this terrain in yellow and yellow and red. Now that's, you know, yellow terrain is, uh, I'm within 100 to 1,000 feet of it. Red terrain, I'm within 100 feet or below it. And you can actually also configure those parameters as well if you prefer something different. But those are sort of standard. Now, I can zoom way out on this thing. And because this is touch screen, I can drag it around. I can even see here the straight line would take me over some of the higher terrain. That's why I rubber banded around the San Marcos VOR. So I'm gonna avoid the terrain. And I can just even look out my windscreen here and I can see the mountains. I'm gonna stay, stay slightly to the left of them. So, very powerful feature right here. I can see the, the color-coded terrain. To, to get back to um, my airplane, I just tap this little crosshairs, and it gets, centers me back up. With, with the Dynon Skyview map, you can touch any area and get information about it. So here we have some airspace, and when I touch it, I'm touching this inner ring of the Class Charlie, and it shows me it's the Santa Barbara Class Charlie surface to 4,000. And if I press the little arrow here, it shows me the Santa Barbara Class Charlie outer ring from 1,500 to 4,000. So we got all our airspace here is interactive. If I want to know anything about this airport, Santa Barbara, I could tap it. It gives me the uh, field elevation, the traffic pattern altitude, and then it goes into the airspaces again as I scroll through. One more feature here that I like to use is, well, how far am I away from these, these mountains to my right? I can see here. This, uh, the distance rings here, just like you have in four flight, three nautical miles from my airplane to there. So this is great for reporting where you are, how far you are from something to air traffic control or in an, at an uncontrolled field in, a tra field in a traffic pattern. You say, hey, I'm 10 miles out. Well, you know, you can know that visually, which is a great estimation, but also you can just scroll this here. How far am I away from Camarillo? Well, there's a 12 mile radius, so it's right about on the edge. I'm about 12, 13 miles from Camarillo Airport there. Super useful. All right, so as far as navigation goes, here I am flying to um, direct to the um, San Marcos VOR, and uh, I've got my um, desired course up here of 269 right here, and uh, my current ground track of 267. And the HSI presentation of the sky view is really incredible. You can see here, um, we've got the HSI with my course needle. Uh, the pink needle is my IFD GPS. The HSI here gives me the uh, IFD course line. The middle of it is the needle that would give me a deviation. So you got a very powerful feature here in the HSI. Now, my IFD nav is tuned into um, the Fillmore VOR here, 112.5, which is Fillmore, 112.5. and. I've got the ability here when I go into the menu and my PFD tools in the sky view, I can select, I can have all these pointers on the HSI. So my primary one right now is IFD GPS. Then I have the IFD nav right here, with his, which is the, uh, the blue bearing pointer. This pointer is gonna give me a bearing pointed to the station. So I can see here that to the station would be a bearing of 089 because here's the little, the blue barb, okay? And then I can have another uh, another source here. I've got my Garmin SL30 nav radio bearing number two. So my bearing number two, which is two barbs here, is going to be to the San Mar. I'm tuned into the San Marcos VR. So you can see I'm going right to that station. I'm on the 269 radio of Fillmore, and my bearing to this Vista San Marcos station is 269. So. You can see here, if you're using, um, you can use the HSI to check multiple VORs all on the same display. So I, if I want just my IFD GPS, I can have just the IFD GPS over here. If I want just the IFD nav, I'll, I can switch my IFD GPS into nav mode over here, and the needle will turn green. It'll turn to V-lock, it'll turn green, and I can see that. And then I can 
tap my course. So this knob now controls the course, and I can set my course. I can see that I'm on the 266 course into the San Marcos VOR. So I can go to IFD nav if I switch the back to the GPS. I will be IFD GPS here on my CDI, and then again, I could change my bearing pointer here to my IFD nav signal, my SL30 nav signal, SL30 standby, if the SL30 has also a standby nav signal, um, or I could change it to the Skyview CDI if the Skyview has a different flight plan than the IFD. So lots of great options here. Now when I'm in my nav mode, my SL30 nav is up. It, I'm going to the, it identifies the, um, the net VOR here, which is San Marcos, the frequency. It's getting that information from the, um, from the SL30, it gets the frequency. And then this is my virtual DME here of 17.7. It's using the GPS information to tell me my DME from that station. So I'm 17 and a half miles to San Marcos station. And, I, and you can use that as a virtual DME, so it's super handy. And the font here is in pink because it's a GPS information. So as I'm flying along and I'm coming across some terrain, I'm going to use this virtual flight path marker, the flight path marker feature of the HDX. This little circle crosshairs is my flight path. This is where the airplane is actually going, um, you know, based on its... Uh, attitude, speed, GPS, etc. So even sometimes when you're pitched up a little bit or pitched down, you might be in a big downdraft, that flight path marker is going to be able to tell you if you're going to, you know, if you're going above a certain tops of mountains or uh, if you're going to be actually headed towards an airport icon that's over there or towards a uh, navigation feature like a landmark. It's very different to be have your heading be towards something and to actually be moving towards it because of the crosswinds. So now you can see that I've got a crosswind coming from the right and the flight path marker is slightly off center from the right to the left uh, because of that crosswind. So even though I'm heading at 270, my actual ground track is 268. So as I'm cruising along, I want to get information about Santa Maria Airport. Now, uh, you know, a good pilot has done all their homework beforehand and you read the AFD and you know the runway lengths, et cetera, et cetera. But um, sometimes you have to divert or you just want to get refreshed on that information. So the, the HDX has an awesome, awesome way of doing that. If I press the info button here, um, and then I can press, type in my airport, KSMX Santa Maria, and I hold this knob in and move it to the right. I'm scrolling across these tabs. First in the airport tab, I'll look at all this information, elevation, fuel types, parking, distance, bearing, estimated time and route, and we've got a tower frequency and traffic pattern altitude. That's just on this page right here. So immediately I've got all that information. Now I want to know about the runways. So I'm going to come over here to the runways, runway tab. I've got runway 1, 2, and 3, 0, which is 8,000 feet, hard surface. It tells you the lights and everything. I can scroll up here and look at 0, 2, 20, which is a 5,000 foot runway. And uh, hard surface, no lights, right traffic, left traffic. So it really gives you uh, so much information. So let's check the weather there. Now, a couple ways of doing this. First, I'll look at the ADSB weather, and then I'm going to listen on, uh, see if I can pick up the uh, ADIS on frequency. So I just push this in and scroll to the left, and here I've got my ADSB weather. Santa Maria, observed 32 minutes ago, VFR, wind is 29010, so I think I'm going to be landing runway 30. Uh, 10 miles visibility, sky broken at 20,000 feet. Got your dew points, your altimeters. And we scroll down here and we even have the TAFs. Uh, we got the terminal area forecast, all this forecast here. And then we've got our nearest winds aloft. Uh, Santa Barbara, here's our winds aloft. So, so much information right here in front of you. You don't have to go to another device. Don't have to reach over. It's all ADSB in and uh, it's super useful. Now, I'm going to listen to the, the ATIS here. So 
I can scroll over to the COM tab, and I can scroll down to ATIS, and then I can press this button here, Tune COM. This will tune my SL30 COM in. So it's tuned my COM in, the SL30. I'm going to switch the frequency on it, and I'm going to listen to it. Now we're still 50 miles from Santa Maria, so we're not getting it, but I've got it loaded up now and ready to go. So this is great because it's while it's also touch screen, you can touch these different tabs. Weather, runway, remarks. Uh, I can also use this knob here to scroll through the tabs. Now here's the remarks. Basically similar information to what's in the AFD about birds, about operating hours, um, about certain jet activity and restrictions. Lots of information, super useful. This is also the place where you can select plates. The subscription to the plates for the HDX are through Seattle Avionics, and I think they're about $99 a year. They were just recently offering a lifetime subscription of like $300 to $400 for a lifetime of current uh, charts and plates. So here's the airport diagram. We're going to press view on the airport diagram, and there it is. If I press this box here, it'll get rid of the map information and we can pinch to zoom. Very intuitive. We can scroll around it. We can press back to go back to our other plates. Let's look at the RNAV view. We're going to look at the RNAV plate. We can scroll it. November 300 Lima Foxtrot contact. We can go back. We can close the window. And then we can bring up our map info. One Bravo with heat traffic, 12 o'clock, three miles southeast, down 7,700, type on us. All right, look at one Bravo whiskey. One really cool feature here is the uh, traffic on the, um, on the HDX. I can see here 1,100 feet above us at 11 o'clock. I've got him here on the synthetic vision. He's kind of going off to the left, but he's that diamond right there. Traffic. And there's different miles, color coding. Two miles, 1,000 feet above. There's different colors that are coded for different types of traffic. Um, we're take, keeping an eye look out here visually. I've got him in sight. And one Bravo Whiskey has a traffic in sight. There one Bravo Whiskey, Roger. This, rep this uh, representation of the traffic is easy to see. The orange track vectors, I think they're either 30 second or one minute track vectors, are really easy to see as well. And uh, it stands out, and it's just a great, uh, it's a great way that it displays it. Now, the HDX also um, declutters the display in the map as you zoom in and out, and it does it in a really smart way. I find the HDX map is really, really easy to read, even easier to read over my um, IFD 540. I love the IFD 540. It's incredible, but I actually prefer the representation of the map on the HDX. This is really well thought out with all the colors and icons and everything. Santa Barbara approach Cherokee 631, Bravo Whiskey. I'd like to, to make a start my VFR descent for San Maria. One Bravo Whiskey for Cherokee Classic. All right, thanks, one Bravo Whiskey. All right, so when you're shooting an approach, um, we can set the minimums uh, we can bug the minimums, and the HDX will call out the minimums, uh, approaching the minimums, and it will call out when you're at the minimums of the approach. Um, and the way we do that is we configure this knob here by pushing it in, and we go to min and push it in. Now we're controlling the minimums. And it, you can see here, it shows up here, minimums. And the minimums for the practice approach that I'm going to do are 1,600. So I'm going to dial 1,600 in there, and our minimums are set. Now, to change any of these other parameters, I'm going to set my approach speed here, my final approach speed. I'm going to touch the indicator airspeed. That controls the bug. I like about 73 knots on my final, my short final. Um, if I want to, I'm going to bug my altitude down with the altitude knob. I'm going down to 4,400. Now, on an approach, if you want to just fly with the PFD full screen, you can configure that too by pressing display full. And there we go. I got the full screen display of the, the flight instruments.
124.15, one Bravo Whiskey. Santa Barbara approach, Cherokee 631, Bravo Whiskey, 5200, descending VFR. 631, Bravo Whiskey, Santa Barbara approach, Santa Maria, altimeter 3018. Advise when you have information, hotel, and you can start runway 30, Santa Maria. 3018, I've got hotel, and I'd love to do the uh, GPS VFR prax approach, runway 30 to Santa Maria. Uh, you want O-Nav or Vector Set? I'm actually on it, so uh, O-Nav, one Bravo Whiskey. Bravo Whiskey, roger. In traffic, 10 o'clock, 3 miles eastbound. Type of known, altitude indicates 2,100. Looking, one Bravo Whiskey. So we got a traffic call out here from ATC, and I see him here on the synthetic vision, and I'm looking in that same spot uh, with my eyeballs. And I'm going to change the display back to the uh, split content map. Now, on my descent here, I should be at about 4,400 at this waypoint, and I'm descending down to 4,400. I've got my bug at 4,400, and my descent rate is about 500 feet per minute, and this arc shows me that I'm going to cross this waypoint, which is my next waypoint, Nero, right there at 4,400. Affirmative full stop with Bravo Whiskey. We're still looking for that traffic. Approaching altitude. Now I'm approaching my altitude. I heard the call out. So after neural, I'm going to go down to 3,500. So I'll set this down at 3,500. We're going to go for it. Down at 3,500. Now, the HDX has a really cool feature where it will alert you if your barometer is wildly out of sync with um, uh, the closest airport where it's receiving the barometer by ADSB. I think it has to be 0 0.1 uh, inches of mercury out or something. Destination ATIS is 121.15. We've got the ATIS. Don't worry. Two miles away from Tenso. Uh, clear to RNAV runway 3 0 approach and we're going to maintain for all right, that cleared our nav, runway 30, San Maria, VFR, Prax approach, 631, Broadway. So when I land, you'll also notice this angle of attack indicator here. I had that uh, angle of attack system installed. It's part of the HDX system, and um, it will give me, besides this visual indication of the angle of attack, it will give me uh, some audible warnings, and you'll hear those audible warnings. Uh, beeping slowly and then uh, more frequently as I approach um, a full stall of the wing on landing flare. All right, we got 2.8 miles to Elsus, and then we go down to 2,500. Down to 2,500. And making the right turn. I got the airport in sight. And 2,500, we'll set it on the bugs. We could look at the plate here. And you can see the plate is geo-referenced as well. And it still has our arc here about how when we're going to descend, what we're going to cross when we descend. We'll slow down for our approach. After PAMG, we're down to 20, 2,200. Approaching altitude. So we're approaching our altitude of 2,500, and we're 0.2 miles from the waypoint. Contact tower, 118.3. 118.3, one broad whiskey. And now we're going down to 2,200. Santa Maria Tower, Cherokee 631, Bravo Whiskey is on the RNAV GPS 30 VFR Prax approach, about uh, seven miles from the airport. Cherokee 631, Bravo Whiskey, Santa Maria, Tower Report, Simso. Roll Report, Simso, 1 Bravo Whiskey. Approaching altitude. He wants us to report the final in 1.8 miles. So the final approach fix is 2200, then we'll go down to 1780. Santa Maria, Tower, Cherokee 631, Bravo Whiskey is crossing Simso. Cherokee 1, Bravo Whiskey, runway 30, clear to land, traffic departing prior to your arrival is a King Air. 
Clear to land, 301 Bravo Whiskey. Down to 1780. After Anna B, we're down at 1,600. Cessna 3, Hotel Golf, leaving 800 feet. Start your right turn, please. Right turn at 800 feet, 3, Hotel Golf. Got dot com, 2216. Now I can go down to 1,600. Approaching no. minimums. You can hear the approaching minimums. Right turn. Take off, 3, 0, 2216. Minimum. All right, here we are at our minimums. I got the airport in sight. I'll descend below. That was a good VFR prex approach. And I've got my airspeed bug set for my short final speed. Now we're on that speed. Looking good. Slight left crosswind. Four uniform zoo and number two runway three zero clear touch and go. Clear touch and go. Got the landing traffic in sight. Four uniform zoo. There's the AOA. Bravo Whiskey, uh, Just taxi to Transit Parking, one Bravo Whiskey. So I landed in Santa Maria and I want to show you a couple features that I wasn't able to show you in flight, followed by some pros and cons and some final thoughts. First, the Skyview has ADS-B and weather. Here's some screenshots of the display. You can even animate it. It works great. The Skyview also has a really cool timer feature that counts up or down, really useful on approaches. It also shows scaled obstacles on the synthetic vision display. And you can choose to display sectional charts or IFR charts instead of the map. Okay, down for some criticisms. To me, the weakest link of the system is the Dynan D10A. It's not very bright. I would really hate to be stuck with just the screen in like bright sunlight conditions. You can install another seven inch or 10 inch screen, but a lot of us have limited panel real estate. I'm hoping Dynan could come out with a plug and play replacement for the D10A that has a better display. So Dynan, if you're listening, hopefully you can make it happen. The D10A also doesn't sync the Barrow with the HDX, so you have to set the barometer settings individually with each of them, and that's kind of a pain. One other negative is that the redundant systems in the cockpit aren't different. You don't have a vacuum system and an electrical system. It's two electrical units, and this might bother some people. It doesn't bother me. They both have battery backup, and I trust them both, but uh, it might be a downside for some people. Overall, I really love the Dynan HDX system. The amount of customization is amazing. So if you're the kind of person who likes to really dig in and customize everything and set up things exactly the way you like it, I think you'll really love this. The more that you use it and get into it, you make these little discoveries and say, oh wow, that was super cool how they designed this thing or that. And you get a better understanding of how it works and all works together. Uh, it's just really well thought out. My biggest takeaway besides the customization and the ease of use of the Skyview is really the overall value of the product. I think it's just incredibly powerful. And when I was researching the Skyview and comparing it to the other products like the Garmin G5s or the G3X, now that's for certified, or the Aspen E5, I looked at the total cost outlay and the feature set that I was gonna gain by spending the money that I was gonna spend. And I just felt like the Dynon HDX was such an incredible value, it was really hard to pass up. I'm really glad that I had this uh, Skyview HDX installed I've really been enjoying it. It has absolutely exceeded my expectations. Uh, I encourage anybody to, to do all the research and look into all the systems, and hopefully the general aviation fleet can start installing these and make general aviation uh, a little bit safer and even a little bit more fun. I hope you enjoyed this video review. I'd love to hear what you think about glass panel upgrades, so drop a comment in the YouTube comments. If you liked the video, click like, and please consider subscribing. I'm gonna put up some links to some of the other videos I've done, the last adventure video was to Sedona. That one was really fun. And thanks for coming along for the ride.